It is the Eastern Roman Empire. Did you know that Istanbul right now, or Constantinople, actually is on seven hills? And it sits on seven hills. It, it is among many oceans. It, is a represent, it represents Europe as well as Middle East because it's Arab and Muslim and yet European. And then it is within the Mediterranean basin, which is the Great Sea. This, I believe, will be a monster, a person, or a kingdom that has the appearance coming from an Arab country. Now the beast, the Bible said, has blasphemous names. As opposed to the first, to the fourth beast of Daniel, the fourth beast of Daniel was just out there destroying, 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 destroying. But this one will destroy and will force worship. He would say, worship me. He would force people to worship me. In fact, in Revelation Re Re 7, uh, 13, it says there, he would put a mark on people on their foreheads on their hand, which is 666. Anybody who don't worship will be kaput. And then the Bible did say that he will attack Israel. Now, this probably is uh, <clears throat> a little bit shocking for some. Again, I said, we looked at the past history. We're looking at our time. If this is our time, what could probably be symbolic of the beast? The Mediterranean basin, the beast being the lion, being the bear, being the leopard, being the, uh, the ugly fort beast, all came from that niche, that, that basin of Mediterranean. Greece is uh, protruding into the Mediterranean area. Italy with that boot actually is in the Mediterranean area. Of course, Babylon is that within that Mediterranean area. Persia is within that Mediterranean area. Revelation 13 is actually an amalgamation of all those beasts that came out, meaning, again, the geography will be in the Mediterranean area. Now, if you would look at this, what is in that area? It's, it's the Arabs. So the beast probably is this. Because I don't see any uglier beast right now. Unless you, you see something. Now, Islam, interesting enough, has two, there's a lot of factions in Islam. But there are two major ones, big ones. The Sunni and the Shia. So a Muslim is not just a Muslim. They would say, well, I'm a Sunni. And the other one would say, well, I'm a Shia. Now, what's the difference? When, when what's his, the founder's name? George Washington? Adam Muhammad. When Muhammad died, they would say, who's going who's gonna, to who's gonna be the next boss? The Sunnis were saying, well, it has to be somebody that we have chosen. So his best friend became the next boss. So they were the Sunnis. But the Shias were saying, no, it has to be the blood of, uh, of uh, Muhammad. So they came up with his, uh, with his uh, nephew. And then they started fighting each other. They were saying, you're the fake kind of Muslim. You're the fake kind of Muslim. And so they were fighting each other. But they come together always when it's against Israel. That's why I remember during the Arab Gulf War, Saddam Hussein sent cut missiles to Israel when Israel was just being quiet. Why? Because if Israel fights back, all the other nations who are quiet will fight Israel. Because hatred of Israel is the unifying pin for the Muslims. Now, both of them, though, believe in an imam. The imam is what they call the wise one. They believe that he will come back. We believe that Jesus is coming back, amen? The Jews believe that the Messiah is coming back, which is true. But they believe also that their Imam is coming back. It's very interesting. <clears throat> this is what they believe. When he comes back, he will be riding in a white horse. You know, I, I was just reading this like, man, they're talking about the devil. I'm sorry, I cannot make this any higher. This is a famous uh, author for the Muslims. Let me read it for you. <clears throat> there will be four peace agreements between you and the Romans, which are the Christians. The fourth agreement will be mediated through a person who will be from the progeny of Hadrat Arun, which is Aaron or Moses, not Abraham, sorry, and will be upheld for seven years. How do they know that? Seven years. And these are these are from their own writers. And then here's another one. Is that there Kukab al Kabab Abha? I say, I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce it name properly. I find that the Mahdi, which is the enlightened one or the leader, Recorded in the books of the prophets, for instance, the book of Revelation says, And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him went forth conquering and to conquer. Muhammad Arif in their book, Al-Mahdi and the 
they said, the Mahdi is the one that the book of Revelation is saying, who rides in the white horse conquering. And we know that in the four horsemen of Revelation, that white horse is a false prophet. <laughs> he just probably admitted he will come. And, and you know what? what uh, interesting is the conquering for them is particular to violence. Look at this. This is another writer, Sheikh Kabani states. These are these are uh, famous writers who have long, lived long ago that they venerate. Hadith meaning tradition indicate that black flags coming from the area of Khorasan will signify the appearance of the Mahdi is nine. You see that flag there? Whose flag is that? That's the ISIS flag. The black flag. You know what's in the black flag? There is only one God, Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. That's what it says today. And that's what they're bringing. The messenger of Allah said the black banners will come from the east and their hearts will be as firm as iron. Whoever hears of them should join them and give alliance even if it means crawling across the snow. Have you heard of the word Khorasan lately? Who has heard of that? Come on, please hang on. You've heard this in the news, right? This was a group of Al-Qaeda that America actually went and bombed first because they think they're the worst kind. And, they, they, and, and the, these are their projects, are, are they true or something? But what I'm trying to say is whether they are, they're, obviously they're not divinely inspired, they're demonically inspired. What we're saying is if they have laid this down as a prophecy and as a Muslim, I receive this. And I believe in it as a Muslim, what would you do? I would line up and do this. Did you know that I was? I, I just read an article that those who would join ISIS, they were given $1,000 a month. Free tax free. With equipments to go along with it. <laughs> and for people in the, those areas, you were shepherds and everything, and your country has been broken. You know, this is a good place to get something. You know, I get to fight the bad Satan, and I'm joining the, the Black Flag Army. Again, could they be the beast? Look at this. This is the news. ISIS militants behead four Christian kids who won't denounce Jesus, church leaders say. They were less than 15 years old. They said, give up Jesus. They said, no, we love Jesus. Off you go. And their, their bodies just lie there. And I, I, I was surfing the web. I was looking and I thought, I said, man, this is so ugly. This is so ugly. Now, let me close with this. Paul was talking to the Thessalonians. <clears throat> they said they were concerned because Jesus came and went and they were left behind. I think that's the saddest news to hear, right? The saddest news is you're trying hard and you're left behind. You come to church always and then one day you came and you said, oh, I went to early. What is it? Sunday? It's on the day or what? Jesus came and you left behind. I think that is so sad. But Paul said, listen, no, no, no. Let me tell you before this thing happens. There are things that you will see. We know about the Antichrist, right? We, we know about that. The Bible said that uh, he will be a man who will desecrate the temple and everything. But then he mentioned something about that. Uh, something was in verse 3. Of Second Thessalonians chapter two. Do not let anyone deceive you in any way, for that they will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. Number one is there will be a rebellion. I don't know what kind of rebellion this is, but he is talking about particular. It's not a political rebellion in regard to the world rebelling into one against one system. This is about moral rebellion about church about Christians. Uh, particular to what Jesus is saying that in Matthew, uh, I think I have it there. Matthew 24 verse 12. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. How do we know that's what it is? Because the Bible said, Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for the devil will come until the rain of curse. The man of lawlessness is revealed. The man doomed to destruction. The Bible said, the man of sin. And Matthew 24 said, there will be an increase in wickedness, and the love of many will wax cold. I was, have you... Who read Revelation? Hey, who did this? Two weeks of Sunday. First of all, let me tell you, the Bible said, if you read Revelation, you are blessed. You probably read it and you're like, 
but that's me. The Bible said you're blessed. Anyway. In the book of Revelation, there is these the seven churches of Revelation. Uh, it's not seven people. It talks about the churches. Because Jesus cares for the church. And then when you would dis when you have this uh, reading, and this is something you would see about the seven churches of Revelation. There is only one church there that was promised that they will be spared from the trial that will come to everyone on this earth. Which is the church of Philadelphia. The Bible said, I know you are weak, but whatever strength you have, you kept my word. Very interesting. Whatever they had left as a strength, they used it to keep the word. But the rest of it, God was saying, do the things that you're doing. You have fallen, come back, rise again. Stop sleeping, you know, uh, stop doing crazy stuff. Because I will come or else I will come like a thief and you wouldn't know when I am coming. Though the, the, the precursor, you notice, the precursor of the coming of the Lord will be, there will be a sudden cold chill. Is it the summer? A spiritual chill coming around the world. Christians would suddenly, the, in fact, the word used here in the Greek was uh, scandalo. Will be scandalized. They will leave the faith. A lot of people are saying, oh, before the coming of the Lord, there will be a great revival. Uh, I still have to see the scripture where that is. But two scriptures here, it says in here, Mark 3, and Daniel said that those who are not sincere will join. It talks about people who have the appearance of believers, but they were not really sincere. So three scriptures suddenly that there will be cooling down, there will be a lot of leaving, a lot of quitting. There will come a time that I always, you know, my pastor and myself and, you know, a lot of leadership are praying that, oh my God, let us grow. Yes, amen, in Jesus' name. All churches wish that. But this is what the Bible said, they will grow cold. In the, in, the, in, the, in the seven churches of Revelation, the Bible said, I have this against you in one of the church, that you hold on to the teaching of Balaam that caused Israel to sin. Meaning these people come to church and yet in the back, they do something crazy. That eventually they will feel so condemned and, they, they, and then they would leave. This is when God said, because they were deceived, because they participated in wickedness, and because of that, God will set a powerful delusion so that they will not believe anymore because they delight in wickedness. So in the last days, Paul is saying, before you look for the Antichrist, the man of sin, before the man of sin will come, he will unleash a lot of sin, and a lot of Christians will pick it up, put it in their body, and then worship the Lord. And then they would stop coming. Now, I was, I was like saying, how could, how could that be? When, what will cause a person actually to quit? I'm sorry. Did I turn it up? Okay. What will actually cause a person to quit? And, and it's very interesting. It is not the knowledge of the word. Because when he spoke to the believers, to the, to the church, he said, do what you've been doing. He didn't say, learn more. Jesus is not something that can be discovered academically. You know that? I mean, you could read the Bible the whole time. You, just, you know him just, just that. There is another level whereby you could know Jesus. Jesus will be discovered more if you will serve. You know why? Because he's a servant. You would know more about the person if you become like him, they, this is what they call the put on the sh their shoe. And I think I shared this to you. Um, I cannot pronounce his name. There's a movie, Fury. The, the guy from uh, Transformers. He's, he's, uh, he was a, a, a tank crew in the World War II movie. He's actually a Jew. But his uh, character was that of a tank crew who's a born again Christian. And it was so funny when I was watching it that this. He, he keeps saying the scriptures that we always say. He would witness to everybody. And he, a new tank, a tanker, he would say, he would tell about Jesus and everything. And his, his, uh, the whole tanker already know the lingo. 
Did you know that after that move, after the, the shoot, 